The Liao Dynasty, which existed from 916 to 1125, was established and ruled by a people known as the Khitan. Originally, the Khitan were hunter-gatherers living in southern Manchuria along the Liao River Valley. Over time, they transitioned to farming and herding. They were vassals of the Chinese Tang Dynasty, but due to their location on the Chinese frontier, they also interacted with other nomadic groups, particularly the Turks. In the 9th century, around 50 Khitan tribes came together under the dominant Yelu clan, leading to the formation of a dynastic state. The Khitan followed shamanism as their religion, but in the 9th century, they also adopted Buddhism while retaining some elements of shamanism. The origins of the Khitan language are still debated by scholars, but it is believed to have traces of Mongolian, Turkic, and Tungustic influences. Since there were no written records of the Khitan until the 10th century, early information about them comes from Chinese sources dating back to the 4th century. The Khitan developed a written script in 920, known as the Khitan Greater Script, which was adapted from Chinese characters. However, it was not mutually intelligible with Chinese, and although it has been partially deciphered, some parts remain unclear. In 924, they also invented the Khitan Lesser Script, adapted from Uyghur writing. Some texts in both scripts have been found alongside Chinese texts, allowing the deciphering of certain words. However, written Khitan ceased to be used after the Liao Dynasty fell and eventually died out. The Khitan took advantage of the weakening Tang Dynasty and saw an opportunity to expand their territory. In 901, a powerful Khitan chief led an army and began conquering northeastern China. They captured 16 prefectures in present-day Hebei province, including the city that would later become known as Beijing. In 907, the chief of the Yelu tribe, named Abaoji, declared himself emperor and established the Great Liao State. The Liao Empire was unique as it comprised both sedentary and nomadic parts. The sedentary part, known as the South-Facing Administration, was bureaucratic and led by a southern chancellor. It consisted of Han Chinese who had surrendered to the Khitan. The Southern Chancellery was responsible for governing the sedentary Chinese population under Liao rule. They enforced modified and harsher versions of the Tang laws and collected taxes from the Chinese subjects while overseeing their production for the Khitan court. Although the Tang-style examination system was later introduced, the Chinese were treated as a subservient caste and served as infantry and laborers for the Khitan. On the other hand, the North-facing administration governed the Khitan tribal people allowing them to retain their tribal and nomadic traditions. This dual system of government operated for around two centuries. Under Abaoji's rule, walled cities were constructed throughout the Liao territory. He built five walled capital cities to administer various regions. The supreme capital was in central Manchuria, the eastern capital in modern Liaoyang, a central capital 100 miles south of the supreme capital, the western capital in the Chinese city of Datong along the Great Wall, and the southern capital was the renamed Chinese city of Yan, modern Beijing. Although these cities followed Chinese city planning concepts, they left large areas vacant to accommodate the traditional Khitan yurts, tents. The Liao court, reflecting its nomadic roots, frequently moved from one capital to another. Despite some resistance, the Khitan people gradually adopted various aspects of Chinese culture. They began enjoying the luxuries offered by their Chinese subjects. However, certain Khitan customs, like the Levirate, a man's right to take his brother's widows as his wives, and human sacrifices during important occasions, persisted. Even powerful figures like Abaoji's chief wife were expected to sacrifice themselves upon her husband's death, although she refused and cut off one of her hands instead to be buried with him. The Khitan did not fully embrace the Chinese rule of primogeniture, where the eldest son of the ruler's wife succeeded him on the throne. Instead, they selected the next ruler through consensus and acclamation, leading to succession struggles and political instability. While few Chinese individuals learned the Khitan language, the Khitan elite became fluent in written Chinese. Chinese became the language of international diplomacy among East Asian states, and all treaties and diplomatic correspondence were in Chinese. Even within the Liao administration, few documents were produced in Khitan. Learning Chinese was advantageous for the educated Khitan, as it granted access to a vast array of written works and Buddhist teachings, especially after the majority of Khitan people embraced Buddhism in the 10th century. The Khitan elite referred to those who strictly adhered to nomadic traditions as wild Khitan. In the 10th century, the Liao state encountered two adversaries among its sedentary neighbors. One of them was Korea, where the Koryo dynasty, ruling over the unified peninsula, was established in 918 and lasted until 1392. The Liao invaded Koryo in the 890s and 990s, forcing the Koryo kings to become Liao vassals, following the Chinese tradition of interstate relations with its neighbors. The Liao dynasty's main neighbor and adversary was the Song, Sung, dynasty in China, which existed from 960 to 1279. Initially, their relationship was peaceful, 
but it turned hostile in 979 when the Song Emperor Taizong attempted to reclaim the 16 prefectures in the Beijing area that the Liao had previously conquered. The Liao successfully repelled the Song's attempts. In 1004, the two states signed the Treaty of Sanyuan, establishing their borders, opening trade markets, and declaring themselves equals. The Song agreed to provide the Liao with silver and silk as part of the treaty, considering it a gift to avoid conflict, while the Liao referred to it as tribute. A second treaty in 1042 increased the mandatory gifts from the Song to the Liao. The peace between the two states lasted for a century and brought stability and prosperity. However, after 1031, the Liao ruler's capabilities weakened, leading to power struggles within the ruling Yelu clan and among allied clans. Additionally, the Liao had to deal with nomadic tribal groups on their frontier. Among these groups were the Jerkin, who were once oppressed vassals of the Liao but later coalesced under the leadership of Wanyan Aguda. In 1114, the Jerkin defeated a Liao army and declared themselves the Jin, Qin, dynasty. The Jerkin and the Song, both holding grudges against the Liao, formed a treaty to attack and dismantle the Liao. With the military prowess of the Jerkin warriors and little help from the Song, the Liao dynasty came to an end in 1125.